Gustavo Petro made history earlier this month when he became the first leftist to win a Colombian presidential election. His campaign against the war on drugs and his impending inauguration look likely to upend a key relationship with the United States. As President Biden explained in March during a meeting with the outgoing conservative president, Ivan Duque Marquez. As you know, Mr. President, I've been deeply engaged in the relationship with Colombia for a long time, going back more than 20 years to that old plan Colombia. Colombia is the linchpin, in my view, to the whole hemisphere, north and south. I really mean it. In other words, Plan Colombia, the transformation of the war on drugs from counter-narcotics to counter-insurgency, should be the norm throughout Latin America, even if it means the U.S. is complicit in an atrocity or two. Because that's what a Colombian Truth Commission found this week. The body, established by the 2016 peace accords between the Colombian government and left-wing rebels known as FARC, used declassified U.S. documents to denounce U.S.-backed crimes in Colombia stretching back decades. Here's part of a summary from the National Security Archive, which helped the commission. Quote, records consulted by the commission illustrate how the Plan Colombia period corresponded with a general escalation in Colombia's internal conflict, the weakening of the FARC's position on the battlefield, the demobilization of thousands of paramilitary members, and the extradition of hundreds of alleged narco-traffickers under President Alvaro Uribe. These outcomes coincided with an escalation in human rights violations and abuses of power, including the murder by the Colombian armed forces of some 6,400 civilians from 2002 to 2008, during the height of the so-called false positive scandal. The commission goes on to reveal that high-level Defense Department records, such as a July 2003 memo to then-Secretary of State Donald Rumsfeld, show how the Pentagon's metrics for success against Colombian insurgents may have contributed to the false positives phenomenon, whereby Colombian army officers seeking performance bonuses murdered civilians and presented them as guerrillas killed in combat. Now, this is hardly shocking. Nor are other documents revealing U.S. knowledge of massacres by its Colombian allies with the help of paramilitaries going back to the 1980s. There is, of course, a long history of U.S. support for atrocities in Latin America. But if you read the New York Times write-up on the Truth Commission's findings, you wouldn't know any of that. Here's their summary, quote, The United States believed that the Colombian military was behind a wave of assassinations of leftist activists, and yet spent the next two decades deepening its relationship with the Colombian armed forces. And yet, as if the killings were an unpleasant side effect and not the whole point of U.S. backing for right-wing Colombian governments, and right-wing governments across Latin America for that matter. During the Cold War, there was Operation Condor, in which the U.S. backed violent right-wing dictatorships in Argentina, Chile, Uruguay, Bolivia, Paraguay, Brazil, Peru, and Ecuador. Tens of thousands of people were killed and disappeared. More recently, first under President Obama and then under President Trump, the U.S. supported illegitimate right-wing governments in Honduras, which came to power on the back of a coup, ruthlessly killed environmentalists and other opponents of extractive capitalism. The Trump administration backed the coup government that briefly ruled Bolivia in 2019 and 2020, which sanctioned the killings of left-wing protesters by state security forces. Also, the Trump administration and the Biden administration have supported Juan Guaido's coup plot in Venezuela, while also backing sanctions that have killed tens of thousands. The New York Times surely knows all of this, and yet... Hey, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of our new videos. Also, if you want to see Means Morning News in its complete form, not just the clips we post here, head on over to Means TV and get access to all our new episodes and our entire backlog, plus tons of other great movies and original TV shows.